We all know that Gallade is a chivalrous knight, like these ducks. Like these ducks. So cute. Uh, all the while, Gardevoir is a valiant... Hugger? I'm not sure uh, how their counterparts exactly. Being the Embrace counterpart, the Pokedex tells us that Gardevoir will protect its trainer at the risk of its own life, expanding its power to create black holes to protect its trainer. Now that kind of power is pretty ridiculous. Black holes are some of the strangest objects in the universe. How can Gardevoir just make one out of nothing? Better yet, what kind of destruction does this Pokemon have? And how did Matt Pat get it all wrong? Today's video is sponsored by Verve, an amazing streaming service that combines Crunchyroll, Rooster Teeth, Mondo, Funimation, and much, much more. Curiosity Stream is a favorite of mine because. Well, because I'm a nerd. But all of these streaming services typically would cost like $48.85 a month. What a terrible value. How does anyone afford that? But through Verve, you can get them all for just $9.99 a month. Wow, how have I lived without it? And they are constantly adding new shows, loads of exclusive ones too, and old classics. Now with Verve, you can watch a bunch of your favorite 90s Nickelodeon shows. So you can keep pretending they were better. As well as the amazing Gary and his demons. And and SWAT Cats. Man, I loved SWAT Cats. Plus, there's loads of anime. Subbed and dubbed. And you can stream it to all of your favorite devices. It's like it's 2018 or something. So, get all of these amazing streaming channels ad-free for one great price. All with Verve. To check it out, click the link in the description or go to verve.co slash Loxton. That's right, to check it out, click the link in the description or go to verve.co slash Loxton. Again, to check it out, simply click the link in the Let's get back to Noggin. Naturally, we need to establish exactly what a black hole is. A black hole is defined as a region of space-time having a gravitational field so intense that no matter or radiation can escape. Any light, particles, or information that go beyond the event horizon of a black hole disappears forever and simply becomes more black hole. You might have heard of a black hole referred to as a singularity, an infinitely small point in space where some mass has been stuffed in. Some special black holes have a ringularity, an equally infinite small ring that has angular momentum. Essentially a spinny, black holey doobble bob. While more simple black holes can be entirely described by two quantities, their mass and the radius of their event horizon. The key word here is that Gardevoir can only create small black holes. And small black holes are very interesting. I'm not sure you even understand. They are small. Like, so small, you can't even see them. That's because they absorb all the light around them, so they are technically invisible to us no matter what. Uh, but fun fact, the, if the sun was replaced by a black hole of the exact same mass, it would still be pretty dang minuscule. Like, this big. I don't remember off the top of my head, so hopefully the information on screen is correct. But also, Fun fact, nothing would happen. The Earth wouldn't get sucked in. The black hole would just eat our sun and then it'd be done. The solar system would be fine. It would just be darker outside, a lot darker. Similarly, if you had a black hole in space with the mass of a paperclip, it would still be a black hole, yes, but it would be so tiny it would hardly be considered a threat. In fact, it's the same threat level as a regular paperclip in space. The size of a black hole with the mass of a paperclip of, let's say, 5 grams, would be 10 to the negative 30 meters. That's insanely small. The smallest element, helium, is 10 to the negative 11 meters. That's exponentially a large difference in size. In fact, if the black hole was the size of a single helium, the helium would be the size of our entire sun, respectively. If we did the, uh, conversions. Hmm. It's just so small, like a little baby universe or space vacuum. But actually not a vacuum, because they don't really suck, they just... gravity. However, small or not, it still would be a threat to the surrounding area, all because of a little thing called Hawking radiation. Because of this radiation, the black hole would have an unimaginably small lifespan. 
In fact, it would only exist for around 10 to the negative 23 seconds. I mean, look at this number on screen. That is so many zeros. Ah! Now, because this little guy would collapse upon itself, as it's much too small to sustain itself, due to it being so small, it wouldn't bump into anything to eat anything to get bigger, so it just kind of appears and then disappears. But that appearing and disappearing, despite not sucking up anything, would still release an enormous amount of energy. This tiny 5 gram paperclip sized black hole would release about 450 terajoules of energy, roughly equivalent to 107 tons of TNT, or an explosion larger than any nuclear explosion that mankind has created. In fact, it's three times the Nagasaki and Hiroshima explosions combined. But thankfully, we don't really know how big a small black hole is according to the Pokedex. Heck, it could mean the size of a small coin, and that would mean it has the same mass as the Earth or even the Sun. You see, small is a relative word. So I'm going to assume it's as small as Guard of War needs it to be in order to protect its trainer. And I'm sure at this point you're wondering, Loxton, Game Theory already did this video, and even though he's covered topics other YouTubers did first, when they do something, it ultimately becomes their topic, and anyone else doing anything similar becomes copying. So why bring this up? Well, firstly, no. And secondly, because I, like many, way too many, like Guard of War, and wanted to do a video on it. Also, it's an excuse for me to rave and rant about it. Since you guys love me hating on others, don't you? It's all you click for these days. Hate clicks are the way to go on YouTube, it seems. Anyway, the game theorist seems to forget one thing. One convenient fact that by leaving out, they were able to lengthen their video and make the topic all the more clickbaity. Long story short, their video's basis is that if Gardevoir made a small black hole too small, it would do literally nothing and it'd be useless. It would simply collapse in on itself and just pop out of existence. Which, because of science, we know isn't true, it still releases Hawking radiation. Anyway, in order for her to make a black hole that actually does anything, it would have to have the mass of the moon before it could sustain itself. But the problem is, at that point, the entire Pokemon world is doomed. It'll be sucked in, and there's nothing anyone can do about it. The science itself in their video is pretty fine, though, you must admit. Nothing quite wrong with it. Besides forgetting that Hawking radiation is a thing. One issue, though, they forgot that they're dealing with the... Pokemon world! If Gardevoir can create small black holes, who's to say she can't sustain a small black hole? And collapse the black hole safely as she sees fit. Gardevoir isn't even affected by gravity. Its gravity powers are insane. So, to create a black hole, you simply have to stuff enough mass into a small enough space. Simple stuff, right? Imagine a marshmallow. Got it in your head? Or just looking at the visual? Good. Now, you squeeze it and squish it, and it gets noticeably smaller, right? But it's still the same amount of tasty fluff. But if you continue to squish it, making it smaller and smaller, hypothetically, eventually it would collapse into a much less tasty, yet same amount of mass, black hole. But really, how small would you need to squish something to make it a black hole? Well, this is where things get a little tricky. You see, the smallest unit of length measurement is a plunk. A plunk length, to be exact. It's about 1.16 times 10 to the negative 35 meters. Yeah, that's 35 zeros after the decimal point. And what does this number tell us? Well, it essentially means that nothing is smaller than it. Pretty much nothing that exists can have zero as its amount, as zero would be less than a Planck length. This idea is responsible for a lot of quantum physics and string theory, but that's not what we're here for. We're here for black holes made by imaginary monsters you keep in your pocket. But what do Planck lengths have to do with black hole creation? Well, it measures length, and by definition, measurements require observation. If you're unaware of it, it's really hard to record something. Trust me. Essentially, if you can't see it or its effects, you can't measure it. Therefore, measuring things is dependent on information being passed on to you somehow, like a microscope. If the photons from the object didn't reach your eyes, you wouldn't know what's going on. Essentially, answering the question, if a tree falls in the forest and no one is around to hear it, does it make a sound? The answer, of course, is no. 
because the energy of the sound waves doesn't trigger the small hairs in our ears that send signals to our brain to convert it into what we believe it to have sounded like. Yeah. <laughs> now let's say we wanted to measure one Planck length. Photons, or essentially light energy, would be used. I mean, if you had a super, super small ruler, you could still measure it, as photons would be able to make it back to your eye after bouncing off the object. Now let's say you wanted to measure something smaller than a Planck's length. Again, you would send a photon to see it, but then here's the issue. Anything smaller than a Planck length can't physically exist because a Planck length is the smallest amount of space you can store information in. That information being anything from mass, color, energy, all of Josh's weird vinyl collection, any of it. Then, if you stuff too much information into an area smaller than a Planck length, it collapses into a black hole, and the information is lost. Although this is rather hard, most black holes are created when a star goes supernova and explodes. The size of the star dictates how much mass or size the black hole would end up being. Fun fact, our sun doesn't even have enough energy to collapse. Instead, it would just turn into a red giant and then later throw off its heavy red coat and expose its white dwarf self. Regularly, it takes a star with 20 times the mass of our sun to actually collapse into a black hole. From the corpse of stars is born the Eater of Worlds, a never-ending expansion of doom until the end of time. When all you humans have passed on, all that will be left is black holes and hunks of iron floating around in the void. This is inevitable. Alright, well... When you add mass by throwing something into a black hole, the radius of the black hole increases. If you added the smallest bit of information possible into a black hole, it just so happens that the radius grows by one Planck length. Now here's where it all comes together. Einstein proved with his famous E equals mc squared that mass and energy are the exact same thing. Gardevoir then focuses her psychokinetic energy into an area too small for it to continue being energy. That space is too minuscule to contain it, so it collapses to form a small black hole. The shock wave would also be small, and the following gravitational suction would be too small too. But that's all Gardevoir really needs to do. Sure, the black hole would collapse in on itself and not do much, but Gardevoir doesn't need to do much. It just needs to move a Pokemon slightly to protect its trainer or whatever. And even still... It's a f Pokemon! Once the black hole is created, the Gardevoir, which has the magical psychic fairy power to create them, might just also happen to have the magical psychic fairy power to sustain it. Who would have thought? Apparently not these guys. If a Gardevoir can add its energy to a spot to create a black hole, it can keep doing that to sustain it. Mind blowing! Wow! Holy! A Pokemon that is capable of doing X is capable of continuing to do X! Ugh. You can't add real-world science to the Pokemon world for one thing, and then forget that you're dealing with the Pokemon world the next moment just to suit your story editing needs! That's called cherry-picking! Uh, though, of course, given enough time, Gardevoir or a group of them could create an Earth-ending black hole. But with the power to add energy at those levels, you have the power to take it away. They are psychic fairies after all, but really, Earth-ending is a whole different ballgame here. In fact, it would take a small 1 millimeter black hole 5 billion years to eat the entire Earth. I mean, sure, the Earth would be a mass of broken lava and rock in a few hours or days, but still, five billion years. The best part is that if the black hole replaced the Earth, absolutely nothing would care. Because most people on Earth would be dead, if not actually all of them would be dead. But the planets of the solar system wouldn't even notice. Its orbit would be the same as the Earth's, just orbiting the sun. The moon would still orbit the black hole the same way it does the Earth. The universe would continue on, and that's because a black hole has the same amount of mass, and thus the same gravitational pull, as any of the non-black hole mass. If the moon was suddenly replaced by a black hole, Earth wouldn't really care, it'd just be darker at night. The tides would still happen the same, currents would all be the same, all that jazz. Existential crisis, the universe doesn't care about you. Anyway, so now you know how 
a black hole gets there through the power of Gardevoir, and you know the effects of our black hole. But really, we still need a reason. Why would Gardevoir, who only creates black holes to protect its trainer, create a thing that would end the world? Isn't that counterintuitive? So why the heck would it do that, eh, Maddie? Which brings me to my next point. Gardevoir can control gravity. Now I know some people, myself included, say that Giratina is essentially the gravity Pokemon. It's not canon, it's a theory, but you know. While that still may be, it's more so, and more importantly, the antimatter Pokemon. While Gardevoir is more so the actual gravity Pokemon. Let's look at Emerald's Pokedex entry. It apparently does not feel the pull of gravity because it supports itself with psychic power. It will give its life to protect its trainer. So, there are a few theories as to why it's not affected by gravity. One is that it's magic, but that's boring. Two is that it uses telekinesis to hold itself up, but that is flawed by the fact that it states it does not feel the pull of gravity, as in at all. Now, there are only a few things that are immune to gravity. Things that don't have mass, although the Pokedex entry states that it has 48 kilograms of mass, so that's out. But in Einstein physics, gravity isn't really caused by mass, it's caused by gravitational waves. Now, because I really don't want to explain Einstein physics, essentially, gravity is much like light. It's emitted in waves. Basically, it's of photons, or light, gravitons for gravity. Understand? So now that you're thinking of gravity as a wave and very similar to photons or light, now think of Gardevoir as almost translucent to gravity or non-opaque, like glass, but for gravity instead of light. The waves just pass through it, not interacting with its body, essentially making it immune or ignorant to gravity. But that's just a theory. A physics and math theory. So, Gardevoir, talk about the ultimate hug machine. It can create a gravity well to attract people into its embrace to end all embraces. I can see why Game Freak made it able to create black holes, at least in the way that many other bits of sci-fi and other media depict black holes as all-encompassing vacuums that bring everything closer to its doom, rather than accurate. That's another thing you gotta always consider, tropes in media. Someone should make a series on it. So, what are your thoughts on the matter? Let me know down below, and until next time, please remember to never, ever, ever stop using your noggin. Uh, or do, and subscribe and click the bell because of it. <laughs>